Every year, at least two and a half million newborn babies around the world fail to live for more than a month. And many of those deaths are preventable, according to a report published by UNICEF. Rates of mortality vary dramatically according to location. In a moment, we'll have a report from Rajini Bajanathan in India and our correspondent Lebodi Seko in Malawi. But first, Rupert Wingfield Hayes from Japan. This is Nao Chan, a beautiful four day old baby girl. In the lottery of birth, Nao Chan has just hit the jackpot. In Japan, the chance of a baby dying in its first month of life is the lowest in the world. Thank you. How are you? Please come in. Thank you. It helps that Nao's mum, Ami, lives in a rich country with excellent health care. But there are two things that set Japan apart. The first is this little book. Every baby in Japan gets one. It will trace Nao Chan's development from the womb until she is six years old. Second, Ami gets lots of mandatory checks. Uh, the first stage, uh, until six months of uh, pregnancy, I go, it's about four weeks, uh, no, no, once in a four weeks. And after that, um, I go two times in a month. And now I'm the last month of the pregnancy and I go once in a week. This is a truly remarkable success story for Japan because just 70 years ago, in 1950, Japan's infant mortality rate was 50 deaths per thousand live births. Today, for the first time with these new figures being published, Japan is the first country ever recorded to go below one death per thousand live births. In India, where a fifth of all the world's babies are born, the chances of survival are much lower than in Japan. On average, 68 newborns die in this country every hour. Gunja gave birth to a little girl three weeks ago. She's been in this specialist unit in Bhopal ever since. Many babies end up here because their mothers are malnourished and don't get proper medical care during their pregnancy. The situation is worse in remote areas. Six hours north, I meet Murthy with her young son Vikram. Last month, she gave birth to his sister, a little girl named Arthi. When Arthi was born, she would vomit every time I tried to breastfeed her, she told me. One hospital turned us away, another asked for more money. By the time we went back to get the payment, she died. It was the second baby Murthy had lost. Access to quality health care is a key factor when it comes to newborn deaths here in India. And for many people, it's still simply out of reach. You only have to come to rural areas to see the impact that's having. Doctors say these specialist units are improving survival rates. But in a country where so many babies are born, too many are still dying. This is Agnes. Being born in Malawi means she has a much better chance of survival. Newborn deaths have nearly halved in 16 years. All right. Simple changes have helped, like discouraging women from giving birth at home. The difference is huge. Here you are supported because at home you could be losing blood. But here, if you're losing blood, they give you an injection. And if there are any other problems, the doctor can help. Premature babies are especially at risk. Here, doctors are teaching mothers the kangaroo method, which helps keep these underweight babies warm using body heat. Child marriage and the resulting pregnancies are a particular problem and can lead to early birth. 80% of Malarians live in rural areas, which means if you are going to have your baby in a clinic, You've got to walk. But the bigger picture is things have got better. UNICEF says it's because Malawi has been open to new ideas. And other developing countries may want to follow that path to give newborns a better chance in life. Lebo Sego in Malawi there, ending that series of reports on infant mortality. Let's briefly round up for you some more of the main...